Hello everybody. Today we're going to look at variables inside of Scratch. So we've already seen uh, one type of variable uh, that we have used in Scratch in other tutorials and that one right here is what is your name object. So once we click on this object um, we can change the question but it obviously says what is your name. So if we type in Mike and hit enter it then stores those four characters, Mike, in a variable called answer. That answer shows right over here. So if we were to double click that, it would show that the, uh, the variable now has the letters M-I-K-E in it. If we were to re-ask this question and say Bob, now the answer has Bob in it. So this is a way for you to change uh, what is in this particular answer. So if we look at the other variables that we might be able to put into Scratch, if we click over here on the variable library, there are now other options that say make variable, make a list, make block. So we're going to go to make a variable. And it's going to bring us up to this screen right here. So we're actually going to make the variable called score. And it's going to go across all sprites. And we're going to click OK. So now we have a variable that's called score. It shows up up here. And we can also hide that variable if we want. So if we want to hide the variable, we can now click on score and it hides it. If we want to show it, we can do that here. Okay. We can also move it around. It acts just like a regular sprite so we can hide and show. So score is going to be on the right hand side for us. So now what we can do is if we want to set that score to be zero or we can set it to be whatever number we want to as soon as we click on that block score then changes to whatever this number is so we're gonna set the score to zero okay then we're going to show the variable before that set score to zero now we can do another variable for time so we can make an actual simple timer out of here too. So now that we have a variable called time and a variable called score, I'm going to set the time to zero. And then I'm going to put in this change variable by one or change score by one or change time by one. So ideally what I want to have happen is I want this timer to actually count upwards. So in order to do that, I'm going to do a repeat. Okay, I can do a forever repeat. Um, I can do a repeat 10. So we'll just do a repeat 10 for right now. I'm going to put that repeat around this time. So every time it goes through this repeat, it's going to change the score by one. Now, if I don't put in a weight, it's going to automatically change it to 10 because technically it's going to go through this as many times and as quick as possible as you put in this up here. So now if I put in a wait one second, okay, I'm going to set my time to zero. I'm going to repeat this 10 times. I'm going to change the time by one, wait one second, change it by one again, and then it's going to repeat that for another 10. So now if I click on this, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then that's it. That's the end of that. So that's a simple timer. Once I click on it again, it restarts. Okay. So that's your code for a simple timer. So now if we want to get a simple score to change, we're going to need to add a sprite. So I'm going to choose a sprite over here, say the ball. And the goal of this is now going to be when Sprite the Cat touches the ball, we want the score to go up by one. So first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to go to control and we're going to need to put in an if then statement. Okay. The idea being if Sprite is touching the ball, then we are going to increase the score by one. So we need a sensing option in here. Now we're coding in Sprite the Cat, uh, Sprite number one. So if 
touching the mouse pointer, if we actually click this and say if touching the ball, then we're going to increase score by one. So we go over to oh, variables. There we go. We go over to variables and we're going to change the variable score by one every time we're touching the ball. Now we need a little bit of a weight in here because again if we just have this going on as soon as Sprite touches the ball or Scratch Cat touches the ball then it's just gonna continue to go up and up and up and up and up. So we need a little bit of a weight in here to make sure that it, it kinda does it a little bit more controlled. So we're gonna go to control and see where it says wait one second. We're going to change that to say 0.25, which is a quarter second. It's a little bit easier. Okay, so we're going to change the score by one and wait a quarter second. So now if I click this and Sprite the Cat is touching the ball, then the score goes up by one. If we do it again, it does it by two because we waited a quarter second. If we take that quarter second wait out, then every time we do it, it's going to then increase the score, but that's annoying that we have to continually touch or uh, enact that code. So we want to put it in a forever loop. So basically, once we enacted this code, we wanted to continually check for this condition. So once we click it once, see how it stays yellow because it's in a forever loop. Now, once I put Scratch the Cat on it, the score is just going absolutely crazy. So if I put that weight back in there, now at least the score goes up in a reasonable amount of time. And again, this can change. This can be 0.10, so it can go up a little bit quicker. But still, that's now the condition, right? So in order to make this have a full reset, if I was to put an event when the green flag is clicked, we're going to set the timer to zero, and then it'll start the timer. And then when the green flag is clicked as well, it'll show the score set the score to zero, and then enact the scoring code. All of those change. We have a timer. Scratch the cat can then touch the ball and increase the score.